more can I say? Top billing. Top billing. Top billing. Yo, top billing to ya. I right, y'all, you already know the drill. If you hear a bump in the night and you start playing rock, paper, scissors with your wife or significant other to see who's going to go and check on it, top billing isn't for you. Because top billing is where we talk about the hardest franchise since its existence, the Baltimore Ravens. All right? And there's nothing more harder than a physical ass run game piloted by multiple physical ass backs. So you've already seen me do work on my man Gus Edwards, the best running back you've never heard of. Gus Edwards is a damn animal. No doubt about that, man. Big ass dude running that fast, that physical. Uh, has that type of versatility and agility and can catch out of the backfield and everything like that. He's worth his weight in gold. Think about all the name brand running backs that have come through the Baltimore Ravens franchise since 1996. And not every single one of them in their prime or anything like that, but just the lineage of backs to be able to walk through those doors there. And you think about, obviously, the greatest running back in in franchise history will be Jamal Lewis. There's no doubt that dude was a damn animal. I love watching Jamal Lewis play. I still wish Jamal Lewis was playing. He was fun to watch. But then you think about guys like Priest Holmes and Ricky Williams and Willis McGahee. Uh, some of these backs out there, man, you're just like, well, damn, they've had a rich history there, and you combine that with the rich history of defense, and you see why I say it's the hardest franchise since its existence. But to me, the second best running back in history was my dude, Ray Rice. I have Ray Rice's jersey. And shit, we're going to be doing a film study here on J.K. Dobbins. And I talk about Ray Rice, so allow me to pontificate and do what I do. This is my shit, damn it. Stop telling me how to do my shit. Don't watch it or watch it or whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to create content the way I want to. So this is what we're going to do. I'll get to the film study here a little bit, but I want to talk about my man Ray Rice in comparison to one J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins is going to be a superstar. He fits this scheme to a T. A lot of the same elements that goes into a Gus Edwards is definitely like that with your boy J.K. Dobbins, right? So they big things come in small packages, right? Holla! <laughs> I gotta quit doing that damn joke. <laughs> That's that G unit joke when they was making fun of Ja Rule. But listen, so Ray Rice was my dude, right, man? I had Ray Rice jersey. I remember when the Baltimore Ravens came here to um to Georgia to play the Falcons in 2010. And I made it my point to go in and check out the the Ravens team bus so I could check out my man Ray Rice here. I got the pictures there. Ray Rice was my favorite running back. The dude ran hard. I love watching him in Rutgers. He was a one-man band, right? He would absolutely put Rutgers on his back. Drafted to the damn Baltimore Ravens, it was absolutely perfect. I feel the same way about J.K. Dobbins. But them out there, they look so eerily similar, man. Ray Rice's career ended prematurely, obviously from his own doing. And seeing J.K. Dobbins out there is kind of like a continuation of it because they are really mirror images of each other here. I had the pictures up. When I saw my man Ray Rice here, right? I'll tell you an interesting story about that, right? So Ray Rice is there, and he's there, and there's some chicks around him and everything like that, right? And there's this one chick that definitely is standing out, and I'm like, damn, this chick is bad, right? I didn't know she was with Ray Rice or not. It didn't matter to me. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to talk to her, right? Uh, comes to find out years later or however, maybe a year later or whatever like that, I see her on TV, and it turns to find out that she is Tiana Taylor, uh, singer, rapper, dancer, everything like that, whole big-time entertainer. In 2010, I don't think she had done anything at that particular point in time. Maybe she was shooting a movie or something like that, but that man had Tiana Taylor right there, and that was bad, absolutely bad. But listen, Ray Rice and J.K. Diamonds, could they look any more similar out there in that number 27 uniform? And I saw the media talking about J.K. Dobbins wearing Ray Rice's jersey like it was something. Man, shut the fuck up. He's wearing a number. Just relax or whatever like that. Even if he was a dedication to Ray Rice or something like that, man, listen, we all make mistakes in life, some more egregious than others. I would never touch a woman in that fashion or whatever like that. But he did, man. He paid his penance. He's been good, a good Samaritan ever since. Do we have to continue to bring that shit up about that dude or pretend like we have to just erase everything that he did on the field because the guy was incredible. As a matter of fact, man, let's check this out and look at this comparison here. 
right, J.K. Dobbins. Been a fan of this guy since he was in Texas in high school, and I worked at Rivals.com, and of course, taking a liking to the running backs. We're paying heavily attention to running backs, as that was the first position that I ever played, position that's near and dear to my heart here. So J.K. Dobbins is somebody that I thought should have been uh, in our Rivals five-star challenge, and that was the time that we had that. Um, it was Najee Harris, Cam Akers, uh, DeAndre Swift, and – Man, I forget I'm missing somebody like that. But those guys were in the group together. And uh, you can definitely see that J.K. Dobbins was on their level, but you can only invite so many people. Uh, another one, Stephen Carr. He was at USC. He has since transferred like that. Maybe J.K. Dobbins should have been in over Stephen Carr. But, hey, if you look where they're at right now, J.K. Dobbins is balling as hard as anybody and probably more than those guys. We'll see what Najee Harris has to offer with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But J.K. Dobbins... 134 rushes for 805 yards, six yards per attempt in the NFL, right? I know it's a a, a smaller amount of rushes or whatever like that, but, hey, you got to play your position. You got to perform to your max at your role allotted. So nine touchdowns, five foot nine, 209 pounds. Ray Rice, like in that aspect, Ray Rice was 5'9", 209 pounds, 209 to 215 pounds um, by the time he finished playing, right? You can see right here the handful of years. Originally, Ray Rice came in at 5'9", 195. Y'all can see he clearly bulked up or whatever like that. And um, But look at this. This is what kills me right here. J.K. Dobbins was a second-round pick. He was the 55th overall pick of the 2020 draft. Ray Rice was the second-round pick, the 55th overall of the 2008 draft. Isn't that crazy, right? Look at Ray Rice right here. He obviously was in a rotation uh, with guys like um, Leron McClain. Leron McClain was a beast. Willis McGahee and everything like that. By the time he hit that second year, man, he had 1,300 yards, 1,200 yards, 1,300 yards, 1,100 yards or whatever like that in the Super Bowl run. Guy was phenomenal, man. I don't know, man. <laughs> I was a huge fan of this cat. Uh, he could fly. He was physical. He could catch the ball out of the backfield. Now, this is where you probably got to see J.K. Dobbins step up. But guess what? Usage does not denote ability. He wasn't using that fashion, if we see right here with J.K. Dobbins last year. If I can get to it. Uh, 20, 18 receptions for 120 yards. Uh, no touchdowns through the air or whatever like that. Ray Rice excelled in that as well. Ray Rice you can see right here, man, he was getting targeted 100 times. 78 receptions one year, 76 receptions another year, 63, 61, 58. Ray Rice was dynamic. Multiple TDs through the air. Uh, if you see right here, though, man, it, it's just eerily it's, it's crazy, man. So I consider this kind of like a continuation. Even there 40 times, they both ran 4-4, four, four, same exact size and height and everything like that. Crazy. All right, man, without further ado, man, let's go ahead and get to this film study on my man J.K. Diamonds, who should have a very big year for the Baltimore Ravens. All right, here we go. But first, a little housekeeping. Make sure you support quality content if you haven't done so already. Salute to those of you who have, man, the many of you who have. I completely appreciate it. I know you guys enjoy quality content and want to make sure that continues to happen, which can only continue to happen with you guys' support. Uh, you just don't know how the behind-the-scenes stuff works. And uh, everything you give is definitely appreciated and goes towards making sure we keep the lights on here at Top Billing. All right. So look at this right here. I love this, right? You got Pistol Week here. Um, it's going to be a split flow play because you're going to have your man Nick Boyle here, right, coming on cross formation block. You see zone flow across the board, right? Stanley, Bozeman, Skur, Phillips, Brown. Zone flow across the board. He has to be able to navigate that with the banger bounce theory here, he being J.K. Dobbins. Um, if the three technique or whomever is on the inside is washed down, you would bang that back inside right there and, and get that organic crease flowing. And um, if they're not, you, of course, keep that to the outside and you want to bounce that there. So he does a great job of that. He's done that ever since Ohio State. He can do that in his sleep. Let's check it out right here. Ghost, you got a ghost motion there. Look at that. Always make the first person miss, which she does. Look at that. Made the second person miss, too. Man, that's what you call running that rock right there, especially in these zone situations right here. We know the Ravens for having uh, a great zone scheme. We know the Ravens for having great gap 
in pool schemes as well. They're just the best conglomerate to me with running the football. And you got shout outs to Greg Roman for that, man. He's one of the best doing it in that aspect. Now, is he the best QB coach or is he the best with passing concepts and stuff like that? No, but we will give him credit for being a monster with the run game. And we used to see that with the San Francisco 49ers as well. So here we go again. Got the ghost motion. Not sure who that is right there going in. Could be Hollywood or DuVernay or somebody like that. But immediately you see right here being able to read this, right? If they're washed down at the point of attack, you can see Stanley start to turn his shoulders here, right? So he's going to get it to the point to where the edge won't be breached. And you can see the, the waters are muddied here. If he were to try to cut this back right here against the grain, it probably wouldn't work out in his favor right here. Um, sometimes you can see these guys literally stop and they will come in and swing it all the way back around and try to hit kind of reverse the reverse B got there. But you can see where it's starting to format right here. Got good blocking out here. Being able to keep that to the outside. Kind of run that alley right there. And he does a great job of it. Look at that. Nasty. And to be out there on the perimeter as a wide receiver for the Ravens, you have to be able to block, man. Great job right there. One more time. You see him navigating that. Still not there. Zach Cunningham right there struggling, getting caught up in the wash right there. Great job of people climbing up to the second level. Stick that foot in the ground, and he can get to the corner with the best of them. His 0 to 60 is some of the best. I used to actually think about him in in high school, in college, when he first came in. I wondered about his top end speed. I knew he ran a 4-4. He ran that at the Nike opening there. But I used to see him get run down all the time. It wasn't until I saw him in that Clemson game in his last year, and I was like, okay, this guy's – I don't know if he worked on his speed or whatever like that, but he was starting to finish runs. And that's the great mark – to me, the mark of a great running back. At least as I was told and I was taught – um, in the scouting community um, with a lot of the coaches that I know, you have to be able to finish those runs, man, and he's starting to do that. Matter of fact, check this one out. 22 personnel this time. You're going to have a lead zone, and it's going to be kind of a long developing zone right here. You can see how my man P. Ricard here, he's able to sift and been able to sniff out his exact assign assignment there, and then J.K. Dobbins following suit there. But everybody else is doing pretty much uh, zone steps right there, inside zone steps, right? So lead zone, inside zone right there. Uh, Brown, Bozeman, Castillo, Powers, Phillips, they all right there. And, of course, you got Tomlinson. And you got my boy Mark Andrews, one of the baddest men on the planet matched up as well. You can just see the whole entire conglomerate and how – Dobbins is, I almost called him Ray Rice, how Dobbins is able to navigate this. Look at that. Look at the patience. Look at him get skinny through the hole and then hit that burst. Look at the stiff arm on him, too. Hit him with the stiffy. They're not going to get a hand on him. Dobbins finishing runs right there, looking like my boy Ray Rice. Let's go in slow. Huntley Wright working out of the pistol here. Now Look at the, the waters are very muddied here. So he's having to navigate this. He wants to try to get that inside hip of Ricard. Ricard does a good job of angling off there, but look at that. So at the very last moment there, you have to be able to adjust your thinking. He has to get that outside hip of Ricard, get skinny through the hole. Hit my man right here with the stiffy. Bang! Gave him a little bit of a mini concussion. He's not going to be able to run with a mini concussion. It's done. He's running, but the fog is all through his brain and shit like that. He's just running on autopilot after that stiffy. Let's go. Look at the creativity of this sweep here. Now, you're going to have J.K. Dobbins looking like he's going to motion to depth here, but he comes full speed and takes the sweep from Action Jackson, one of the baddest men on the planet as well. And you got my man Schobert here. He's trying to get to the corner with Ray Rice and you can see that zero to 60, especially when he always already has a head of steam. Schobert is unable to corral him before he gets to the corner right here. I love this particular play. This is some great creativity from Greg Roman. Motion, boom. Look at that. Almost get a split flow action. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. It's just a great way to manufacture something right there. Now look at this. These guys run with a reduction. You can see Jacksonville reduced down because it looked like it could 
we never know. Maybe be a power play from Lamar Jackson in the way they read this here. It could actually be a read if the way you're seeing Lamar Jackson doing this, optioning off the first man here, or optioning off the unblocked defender here. Orlando Brown vacates that. I would say this is probably an option, but this is a tough option because he's running full speed there to be able to make that particular play an option with him running like that. But you can see right there, they option off of it perfectly here. Schober trying to cut the angle. Look at Dobbins outrun the angle. Come on, that should have given you vertigo. Look at that, Schober, did <laughs> Schober running nauseous and shit, right? That type of shit right there give you vertigo. You see some dude fly across your face like that, right? It's like one of them weird roller coasters at Six Flags or something like that. Ain't something supposed to be moving across your face like that, bro, that damn fast. This is one of my favorite plays, and they kind of ran this ad nauseum. You can see with J.K. Dobbins, the area for improvement or not even really improvement just the area of opening it up and having him do more things because he was so successful getting to the edges now imagine him being able to run the full gamut with they trust him with the entire playbook along with Gus Evers they really got that double trouble thing going on reminds me of D'Angelo Williams and Jonathan Stewart with the Carolina Panthers back in the day both can flip each other's style because they're both obviously big enough to run inside the tackles and they're both fast enough to bend the edges so this would be a a, a naked sweep here. Ultimately, you'll get J.K. Dobbins running with the split flow action, but it's a pin and pull. You got Skura here, right on the on the two eye, but then they're both pulling, or they're pulling both uh, Bozeman and Stanley right here. So you get a ton of split flow action. And then you get Lamar. He's bluffing like he's running behind him. Like it could be some type of QB counter. A lot of shit going on right there. Greg Roman is a mad scientist when it comes to that, for sure. I love this play. It's a quick hit and play, too. Look at that. You can't be right, especially when he can get to the edge like that. Oh, made a man fur. Oh, made two men fertilize themselves and then sternum busted the third man. Come on. I love it. Look at that. Look at the, the action here. It's a lot of stuff that crosses your face right here. If you've been on defense as a linebacker, having to both read your keys. Look at everybody flow because of the linemen both flowing right here. Look at everybody on the second level here. All three linebackers flow to, to that way there. Boom. You kind of get a, a trap block there by Bozeman, right? A snot bubbler. And are you going to stop J.K. Dobbins from getting to the edge if you're a first-level player, a line of scrimmage player? Very few. Especially if he can take it out wide like this. Willie Sneed out there blocking. Miles Boykin out there blocking. He gets to the edge, makes this man fertilize himself. Look at this. Bangs. Spread his herb ass on the grass like fertilizer. Look at that. Cars on a two car pile up. How did that happen? <laughs> Look, right? Come on. I'm not sure what was going on. Then he already fell. Oh, he fell from Sneed. Sneed made him fall right there. He's getting up, slipping. <laughs> he's slipping and sliding. My man jumps up, knees him in the back, right? So he's having a bad day. He's got a back bruise right now. One more man fertilizes himself, and then bang, going to finish physical because it's Baltimore Ravens football. Hey, that's what they do. Love that run right there. Going to see two straight plays of the same exact concept here. They're going to be pulling Bozeman here kind of an off-tackle play. And you can see how they do the same play with different personnel because you can see Boyle in the game right here. And on the next one, they'll have Ricard. But you'll, you'll get to see it right here, almost like a, a, a counter play. But um, it's pretty much an off-tackle play meant to get him to the edge. But look at him, how he navigates both of them differently. This one right here, he bends the edge. Look at Bozeman, man. I love Bozeman. He's got that 77, man. Uh, he's going to be, have to wear my boy Matt Burke's number from center, one of my one of my favorite centers there. But him pulling right here, sometimes I used to notice Dobbins is just too quick for him. Dobbins would be him to the punch right there. Look, he's unable to even get to the second level defender, but it doesn't matter because Dobbins bends the edge with the best of them right there. A man can't what? Boom. First man has to fertilize himself again and able to run behind the block and the Miles Borkin out there. Good run. Now check this out. Same exact play, a little bit different personnel, like I said before, with Ricard in the game. But this time, great blocking. Great blocking, but great vision. Not trying to get it to the outside right here. 
Of course, you bring in Bozeman around. He does get the overhang defender right here. So you would think he could either come this way, but you can see the approaching defensive back here from the third level. He sticks that foot in the ground, gets north-south, runs through the first tackle right there by Vander Esch, and gets himself a pretty good gainer right there. So same exact play, but navigating a little bit differently to show his versatility and to be able to show his football intelligence and being able to both read blocks on the fly and to be able to stick that foot in the ground and get north-south. You can see his ability to create in the passing game right here. Just swing pass. Look at that. Make the first man miss still. Zach Cunningham, great job on that. J.K. Dobbins has pretty good hands. Uh, obviously, we've seen him drop a few passes this season, but it's nothing too egregious. I think he has pretty good hands, and I think he could be a high-volume pass catcher. There's no doubt about that, in my opinion there. But see right here, caught dead to rights by Cunningham. It don't matter. Put the spin cycle on him. Continue to move doing his thing. So there you have it, man. That man, double trouble, working with Gus Edwards, of course, with Action Jackson back there, and a wealth of really good receiving talent coming in. Sky's the limit for this particular offense. The offensive line as well, I think one of the best, or has a chance to be one of the best. We'll see with some of the new additions like a Villanueva and a Ben Cleveland to see where they go from there. But sky's the limit for the offense. We already know what the defensive side of the ball is about. The Ravens have a chance to make some serious noise this season. Fuck what you heard. I don't give a dang. You need to really respect the Baltimore Ravens and what they could accomplish this year. All right. So hashtag real men watch to the end. Thank you for everyone who watched to the end. I was thinking about uh, what question to give y'all or what kind of call and response to give y'all. I got one for you. Who's harder? Dewan Landry or Chuck Clark? I love both them dudes. My man from Virginia Tech, Chuck Clark, obviously one of my favorite players. And, of course, Dewan Landry I thought was severely underrated there. Uh, he was coming out of Georgia Tech. So two guys coming out of a Tech, Virginia Polytechnic, and then the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets there. Who's harder, Dewan Landry or Chuck Clark? And let me know what you think about J.K. Dobbins and where he fits in the pantheon of, um, man, backs like – two years or less of experience so not anybody established or anything like that two years of less of experience and let me know where you think jk dobbins sits all right it's your boy murph the underground king thank you for watching top billing sports and i am out peace what more can i say top billing, top billing.